Welcome to SBI's GTM Value Creation Corner podcast with SBI CEO Mike Hoffman hosting. Each episode is an unscripted conversation between Mike and a GTM leader, expert, or practitioner about what's on the minds of executives, latest market trends, and SBI research and insights. In today's episode, Mike is joined by Scott Grewer. Scott is SBI's consulting group president and chief client officer. He has spent his career as a GTM leader and is trusted by some of the largest private equity firms in the world to help accelerate growth across their portfolio companies and by Fortune 20 companies to drive commercial productivity. The two are talking about how CEOs are responding to the uncertain market, the benefits of inorganic growth, and the importance of shoring up talent. Hey, Hoff, I know you're uh, out in the market every day interacting with CEOs. We do a ton of research. Well, what's kind of the narrative you're hearing right now in the market? Uh, sure. First, hey, Drew, this is great. We're, we're together in person. We don't, we don't have this opportunity. So we're at our FPS in New Orleans. So the podcast from, from New Orleans. I think the, the narrative that we've been seeing right now and the things we're hearing from CEOs in recent conversations is, and, and this probably began last July, and you know, the narrative of uh, that the media has pushed out there that there's a recession and well, the, the recession didn't really rear its head in late 22, it's gonna be in early 23 and then it didn't really materialize in 23. And for a while, CEOs went into a little bit of a, a, a protection mode and, 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 um, and kind of curled up as a business and hunkered down a little bit. As we've gotten into 2023 and into the heart of 2023, uh, there's a little bit more of uh, a sentiment of w- we need to move forward. We need to have a growth strategy because eventually people are either going to get used to the new reality of interest rates and where they sit, um, and and they're going to get used to uh, the just the idea that it's a it's a new world. Uh, and and because of that, now the, they're making choices they're making choices on the things that they can control, not the things that they can't control. So what are, what are the things that, versus the gravity issues of the economy, what are the things we can do as an organization that are within our control to set us up for when people get used to the new reality or this thing bounces back? Yeah, yeah, that's super consistent with what I'm hearing too. So, I mean, there are some real challenges out there when you, when you kind of cut through the fear, uncertainty, and doubt that we're seeing in the media. Uh, a couple of things I continue to hear off. Number one, I mean, costs are up right? Employment costs are up due to the great resignation and having to pay people 10%, 20% higher in many roles. That's reality. Cost of capital, it's up. We all know that, right? So there are some cost challenges. Uh, The top of the funnel is growing in many companies. We're hearing, especially over the last three months, but we're not seeing the velocity through the pipeline to bookings and revenue, which is a challenge. There's a lot of competitive pressure in the pipeline. There's a lot of pricing pressure on renewals, and the time of uh, purchase. And we're hearing a lot of people say, you got to click up a notch to get a deal done. So if I was selling to the CEO before, now it's to the board. If I was selling to the head of sales ops, now it's to the CRO. And that's causing a lot of challenges because salespeople, you know, they have, they have to change their motion. And then the third big one is just the morale of the sales organization or the commercial organization. People having to come back to work. People uh, have a lot of fear, uncertainty, and doubt because they watch the same news the CEO does, and maybe they don't know how to deal with it, or this is the first time they've went through a recession off. So it's uh, it's a challenging time. I think you're spot on as a CEO. You gotta you gotta get pe- keep people focused on the right things, which is where we're going to move to in this next section. Yeah. Yeah, I think just a couple of things to add. Ed, when you talk two really big ones that you talked about: one, cost of labor; yeah. two, cost of capital in pockets. It, it, we've we've seen a big impact on organizations. So in healthcare, a lot of people after COVID, they left healthcare. And so there's some of the wages in healthcare. So we're seeing pockets where that has really been hurtful. So companies that are, you know, there, there are a couple of, of very public examples of companies that have lost hundreds of millions of dollars in the last quarter from that. The other one is the cost of capital. Right. And in the tech world, if you have been over leveraged initially, now it is not about, it's not just about managing EBITDA, it's about survival and can you pay cash. Now, here's what's consistent though, whether you're in a situation where you've been impacted by cost of capital or you have been impacted by cost of wages. All of the CEOs we've talked to have said a couple of things. One, we see pipelines getting bigger. Right. That's great. 
But at the same time, the deals are moving slower. So a couple of, those are a couple of the trends from the, from the big sort of gravity issues that you brought up. Nice. All right, well, let's move on to the next section. We can talk a little yep. about what do we do about it? So uh, when we look at what CEOs are doing to combat what we just talked about, right? There's gravity issues in the market we can't control. And then there's different challenges, right? Just to remind everyone, costs are up, both cost of capital and employment costs. Uh, it's hard to move deals through the funnel with the same velocity we're used to. And morale is challenging. Uh, what are you seeing CEOs do with their teams to keep them focused on the right things? Off. Yeah, I, um, and, you know, and I'll probably bounce this back to you, but I, I, there are a couple of things. One is back to the base. How do we do a better job of selling to companies that have bought things from us in the past? Right. And it's, it is, and, and there are things like, like ABM or ABX and customer marketing, which are, it's interesting because I, I hear CEOs say this and I haven't heard that in the past. Right. And, and in some cases, I, you know, you, you almost have to have Google up and, uh, you know, and running while you're having a conversation with your CMO. So I don't, I don't know if yeah. you have any commentary on that, but that's one is back to the base. I'm hearing it all over the place. And, and what I see is, is people are talking about it. They're talking about ABM, ABX, um, but it's, it's kind of at the buzzword level, right? It's this interesting thing. We can drive more in the base if marketing and sales are aligned. But I think you have to take a step back and really look at what is customer marketing? What is sales doing to cover the base more effectively and with what level of a rigor? And then how is customer success now playing a role in that? And when you look and you have you know, all these different organizations touching your customer base, it gets complex quickly. And the best, the best people I've seen do this in companies, um, they really make sure they're super focused on, a, on two or three outcomes they're driving across organizations. And they have the same KPIs. They have very clear swim lanes and roles that are going to these clients to drive uh, revenue. And instead of calling it, you know, account-based marketing, they get very specific on the tactics behind it. And it's not this, you know, grandiose program called AB whatever. It's very, very specific and targeted based on strong segmentation data. So, so the answer on that is if you're a CEO that's confused about ABM, call Scott Grewer. Uh, th that's good. The, the other one that I'm hearing a lot is talent. And talent at the executive level. Right. What is what do I need with my CRO? What do I need for a CMO? What do I need for a chief sales officer? Should there be a CRO that has marketing and sales underneath them? So that's one. The second thing on talent that we're hearing, and, I, and then I want to throw it back to you for comment. The second thing I'm hearing on talent is, does the person that's in the in the seat, whether it's the marketing seat or the sales seat, is that the right person? It was the right person yesterday when it was right. grow at all cost, but is that the right person today? And even in conversations with uh, Eric, the CEO of Bespoke Partners, Eric said, there are some superstars historically where CEOs are reaching out saying, I'm not sure that's the right person to take us to the future. No doubt. So, so I don't know if you have any commentary on those two things, like how should, how should I think about CRO, CMO, chief sales officer, and is the person that took us to where we are today the right person in this new reality we live in to go forward? Well, I think it's the right question. I, I think the, the problem I see frequently is sequencing issues, meaning they jump to, do we have the right leader? Without knowing for sure, do we have a very clear strategy at the corporate level, a very clear commercial strategy? Do we have the right processes in place? Do we have the right org design? And then do we have the right talent in that org? They want to jump straight to the talent. It's a hard question to answer. If, if you're not super clear on your strategy, the org, and what outcomes you need, to your point, you end up reverting to how you did it last time, which is what a lot of leaders do, right? And how you did it last time, it's antiquated. The world has changed drastically just in the last three years, not to mention 10. So if you go with that model, you probably have the wrong person in the seat. And when you ask that question, is this the person to get us to the next phase? I think a lot of times you already know the answer. In your gut, but I, you know, I had I had a conversation at one point. You know, and been speaking is the right person. Um, this was a few months ago. The CRO of a billion dollar revenue software company mm -hmm. said, "Mike, for years it has been all about driving ARR and drive it at any cost. And now they're telling me I've got to focus on EBITDA 
And I literally, he said, I don't know where to start. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really been accelerated recently. I think that the shift uh, from CRO to more of a business leader has been happening for the last three to five years, right? People have had to get more efficient with deploying inside sales, how they interlock with customer success. But in the last year, it's become so acute. You, you can't be a revenue leader anymore without understanding how to drive EBITDA and really drive more efficient routes to market. It's just, especially in private equity. Right. So those are the two, those are, those are the two primary I'm seeing on the organic side is back to the base and do I have the right talent in place? Yeah, I'm glad you brought up organic. So the other big one I know, you know, you're looking at for our company, but also we're seeing everywhere is M&A and how are you looking at add-ons and tuck-ins? So, so what are you hearing from your peers on that one off? Yeah, I, it is, <laughs> it, it's definitely on the radar. Uh, with the cost of capital right now, it's kind of it's it's more tuck in acquisition. Right. Can I can I pay for this off the balance sheet, and and can I afford to do the acquisition, um, and and make sure you you do the right one and you execute it. And the reality of it is, in a tough market in 2023, doing some inorganic stuff right now not a bad idea because it's going to erase some of the some of the warts right. that 23 is going to show. Now that said, as soon as you as soon as you make that acquisition, you got to live with it for the long term. So you better be able to quickly integrate that thing because in 2024, people are going to be able to sort it out on a pro forma basis. They're going to be able to look at hmm, how'd they perform on 24 versus 23? Uh, but but it is a it is a play right now to drive growth. Where whereas a lot of CEOs are saying I'm forecasting a flat year organically, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go after some M and A where where we can where we can digest it. Yeah. Yeah. I know we, there's a few rules that we, uh, we were brainstorming around this on, you know, how do you make sure you do the right M&A? Because right now I think a lot of people are struggling with the timing. It's kind of like the housing market. Like, are we at the bottom? Is it, you know, mm -hmm. is it going to get better? Is now the right time? And to your point, you might be hiding some sins in your suit. So some people are getting a little deal drunk and they're moving too fast. Right. And then they're going to have to live with that for X amount of years. That's going to be painful. So make sure you do quality diligence. You take your time and you buy the right assets. Yeah. Uh, you can't lose any customers or A players when you do it. Right. Right. You just can't. Uh, and then the last one I think is, is you got to look at that, those short term horizon one moves you can make in the next 90 days around cross selling, for example, to get some value, but don't break it. Be patient. It's okay to wait a year or nine months and, and go with the bigger levers then. So it's not too disruptive on the business. Cause like we said, CEOs are focusing their resources on what really matters right now. Yeah. All right, let me put, so let me play that back to you. So, so number one, when we do an acquisition, don't lose any customers in the process. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> it's it's really hard to claw that back, and we've seen that before. Number two, don't lose your A players due to uncertainty. So if you have to ring fence things, whatever it has to be, don't lose A players until you get it sorted out. Third, what is the what's the low hanging fruit from a cross sell perspective? Right. Okay. And and then after all of that, then we can then we can take advantage of the cross and the uh, cost and revenue synergies that that we're all well excited said. about. Yep. That's in the deal model. Agreed. Okay. Good. That's helpful. So, all right, Gru, we're we're actually going through some M and A right now. We're at the final stages of something. What are some things that you're doing uh, across those things commercially? to set us up for success. Yeah, we, we, we broke out Horizon 1 and Horizon 2, as I mentioned earlier. And really in Horizon 1, we're keeping it really simple. So very clear, precise plan on how we're going to cross-sell, both into our company and into their company. Who's going to do it? Which companies? Just very simple, so there's no ambiguity. And it's not overly disruptive, right? So that's one. Number two, how we're going to add capacity. Right, pour a little gasoline on the acquisition to give them more capacity to cover the market in the short term. Neither of those are overly disruptive, right? But we want to put some quick wins on the board, right? And then in Horizon Two, you know, call that six to twelve months from now, we'll go deeper into some areas that you know, they're going to drive more value for the business. Probably a little more disruptive at that point, but let's get some quick wins on the board first. So, so Gru, you're yeah, you're keeping us honest while while I'm thinking about. How do we build the next great product associated with this and get everybody distracted? But yeah, that, that is good advice and, and good points. And you have been very, very focused on what are the short-term wins and making sure we don't violate those three rules. So everybody, thank you for, uh, for tuning into the show. 
Uh, we'll uh, stay tuned for our next topic. And by the way, all of the insights that we bring to you, they come from our community. That's our LinkedIn followers, members of our advisory board. If you would like to be part of that advisory board group, please feel free to reach out to us. Reach out to us and follow us on LinkedIn. Uh, additionally, uh, subscribe to our research on sbigrowth.com. And just to add a, l- a little bit there, the advisory boards we do are for CEOs, CROs, CMOs, heads of sales ops, and heads of sales enablement. So we do them across all those different personas. All right. Well, I think we're, uh, I think we're about our time. So appreciate everybody tuning in today. Hoff, thanks for sharing your insights with yeah, everyone. Thank you. This was a great conversation. Yeah. Until right. next time. Thank you. You've been listening to SBI's GTM Value Creation Corner podcast with CEO Mike Hoffman hosting. Visit sbigrowth.com to read SBI's latest research, join upcoming events, or learn about SBI's GTM services. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast and connect with us on LinkedIn.